Okay, let's go through an example. This is a homework problem from your textbook. This is homework problem 7-18. And in it we're dealing with a shaft that's part of a larger gear set and we want to analyze it for different types of deflection. Let's see if I can pull this up. Uh, here it is, here's the overall system uh, from the textbook. There are three different shafts in this gear set and we're concerned with this shaft at the bottom. We can see that we have two gears that are meshed with each other uh, in the middle and we have a bearing supporting it over here and a bearing supporting it over here. So we really need to pay attention to angular deflection at three different locations, both of the bearings and then also at the point of this uh, gear mesh. So we have nine inches between the bearing A at the left and the center of the gear and then we also have six inches between the center of the bearing and the end of the shaft at A and then uh, two inches between the center of the gear and B. Here's one potential design down here and we can see there are shoulders and other elements of the shaft that are designed to uh, work with the bearings and then also with the gear and this could get really complicated if we were to analyze the different diameters of the shaft but to simplify things here let's instead just assume the shaft is a constant diameter of 1.875 inches and that simplifies things and it is an approximation so it's not going to be uh, exactly what we experience in the real system but it, it, as long as we have a design factor included it, uh, it, it may be a good enough approximation for a quick analysis. So we're only going to look at part B of this problem and look at deflection and, and here we're really just going to focus on the angular deflection. So if we have a look at table A-9 this provides us with beam deflection formulas that are exactly what we need in this case. So this is uh, case 6 and it's a, a simply loaded beam. So if we have two reaction forces and then a transverse or radial force somewhere in the middle of the beam and it's not in the middle uh, in the exact center it's just at some arbitrary location in the middle of the beam. So I encourage you to look that case up and make sure you get all the terminology for that. So here's the formula for the slope of the beam between points A and B as defined in the formula. So in other words, we are approximating that slope as the first derivative of deflection with respect to position of the shaft. And so that's going to be equal to the force, and this is going to be the axial force of the gear, times the length B divided by 6EIL times 3 times x squared, x being whatever location we are considering, uh, x squared plus b squared minus l squared. So if we plug all the numbers in, then we end up with this formula, 1, 4, 4, 9 times 2 times 3x squared plus 2 squared minus 11 squared, so 11 being uh, this total length of the shaft, and then 6 times 30 times 10 to the 6 times pi over 64 times 1.875 the diameter to the power of 4 all times 11. So this is a function of x. Everything else is known. And so if we were to plug in values for x, if we had x equals 0, then we would discover that the angle, the slope, that's going to be minus 2.823 times 10 to the minus fourth radians. 
and then at x equals 9, this is where the gear is. The angle is going to be 3.040 times 10 to the minus fourth radians. Now, this was all for analyzing the shaft uh, to the left of the load using that formula. To the right of the load, we use a different formula. And the slope uh, theta BC, that's going to be equal to uh, dy BC dx equals F times A instead of B divided by 6 EI L times the quantity minus 3x squared plus 6x L minus 2L squared minus A squared. Now we're interested in the case where x equals L or 11 inches and we can evaluate that here. Theta is going to be equal to, let's see, FA over 6EIL times L squared minus A squared equals 1449 times 9 times 11 squared minus 9 squared all divided by 6 times 30 times 10 to the 6th times pi over 64 and remember uh, to look up the formula for the area moment of inertia to see where that came from 1.875 to the power of 4 times 11 and that is 4.5 3, 4, 2 times 10 to the minus 4th radians. So if we look at table 7-2, this gives us some recommended allowable slopes for different situations, for gears, for bearings, and so on. And this is a good thing to go from. Uh, if you're designing an actual system, I would recommend getting these recommendations from the actual manufacturer of the components to make sure you don't exceed their limits. So first, let's look at the left bearing and see what the uh, design factor or the factor of safety is in this case. And so if we look up in the table, the allowable slope is uh, one milliradian. And then the actual slope is uh, less than that. And the safety factor is 3.5. So we're fine at the left bearing. And then the right bearing, again, we have the same. Let's see. Uh, in this case, we want a smaller slope and divide that by the actual slope. And so we get a noticeably smaller safety factor, but it's still probably accept acceptable. So let's look at the gear. Now I should point out something about this. This gear, as we look at the original figure before, it's meshed with another gear. So there are really two things to consider here. Uh, we need to consider the gear that it's meshing with, what its maximum deflection might be, and the, def and the angular deflection of this gear. So at least for now, all we can do is look at the deflection of this gear. Maybe if we assume the other shaft is really rigid, uh, then this might be acceptable. But really in designing the overall system, we need to consider the interaction between these gears and look at the slope of both of those gears. So let's do that. And the safety factor here, uh, we can safely say it's going to be less than this value. Uh, so this assumes that the other gear doesn't move. Looking up the allowable slope in the table, it's uh, 0 0.0005 radians. And then the actual slope was 0 0.00304, and that gives us 1.6. So that's getting a little bit small. It really depends on the application, and it depends on what happened with the what, ha what happens with other gear so if it deflects substantially then maybe we have to redesign the shaft maybe the uh, angular deflection is not going to be good enough 
So, all right, with that, I'm going to conclude this uh, short lesson on, on deflection uh, analysis for shafts. And later on, we're going to talk about the overall design process for shafts. And uh, I hope this is very helpful for the homework, any class activities, uh, and the exam that's coming up. Thank you.